Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to submit, replace, and cancel orders using the Trader API. I'm also going to show you how to retrieve your order history. I'm still working through the code for complex orders. Once I have a working script, I'll go ahead and share that with you guys. But for now, we're just gonna be submitting single orders for stocks and options. And as always, you're gonna to need to insert your app key and your secret code along with your access token. If this is your first time here, please see part two of the series, which I show you how to obtain this file for the tokens. And you're also gonna be able to get this check access token function, which auto updates your access token if it's expired. Now in my previous tutorial, I went over the accounts. So make sure you see that tutorial and grab this function, which will retrieve your Schwab account number along with the encrypted version. And as you see for line 105, I ran that function, which should return a data frame similar to this one, where you have your Schwab account number and then the encrypted value. Whenever we submit orders using the Trader API, we need to pass in this hash value for the account. So that's what I'll be using whenever you see me place orders. Now we're also gonna need a helper function to build out option symbols the way this API wants them in. That function is called build option symbol, where we just pass in the underlying symbol, the expiration, the type, whether it's a call or a put, and the strike. And it's gonna use those values to build out the option symbol, which we will pass in whenever we submit orders. Now for the following block, we're gonna build our function to place orders. And again, these are single orders. And we have nine parameters. The first being the account number, which is the encrypted version, the ticker for the stock or option, the side, whether we are buying or selling, and please review this table to make the appropriate request. The session, which can be normal, AM, PM, or seamless for all three. Now, of course, for options, we would have to submit these during normal trading hours. For the duration, we can use day, good to cancel, or fill or kill. For the order types, I'm gonna be using market or limit. We also have the quantity, whether it be in shares or contracts, or limit price. If you're gonna be using market orders, don't assign a limit price, and that's why this limit price is set to null, or else you'll get an error. And finally, the asset type, which can be equity or option. Now, if we step into this function, we're gonna use our account number to build our URL. Next, we're gonna check if the user is using a limit or market order. So if you're using a limit order, make sure you assign the price and it's gonna round that price to two decimal places and it'll return that as a character. Otherwise, if you're using market, we're gonna return a empty string for the limit price. And here's where we create our payload or the information we're gonna be sending to the API. If you're trying to submit complex orders, I've noticed that the only thing that really changes is the payload. Everything else within the function will remain the same. So we're gonna build our payload using the information the user passed in. We're gonna check our access token, and then we're gonna create a post request using our URL, our payload, and our current access token. And if the page status code is 201, we're gonna go ahead and extract the order ID from the URL found in the response page. Otherwise, if there was some sort of error, we're gonna print that message out to help us correct our errors. And that's basically it for this function. So we're gonna go ahead and run this block. So I'll go ahead and minimize this function and we're gonna be running through some examples. So the first will be a single stock order. We're gonna pass in our encrypted account number. The ticker will be AMC. The side will be buy. The session will be normal. The duration will be day. The order type will be market. I just wanna buy one share and the asset type is equity. I didn't add a limit price since my order type is market. And if you're testing this, please don't run this during regular trading hours because these orders will go live. And since we're using the market order, it'll most likely go ahead and fill if there's money in your account. So I'm running this after hours for testing purposes. Now our second order will be for Palantir. We're gonna try and buy this stock, pass in seamless for the session. So it'll be good for the AM, regular and PM sessions. The duration, I passed in good till canceled. My order type will be limit. I just wanna buy one share. And since I'm using a limit order, I need to set a limit price. So that will be five and the asset type will be equity. So for the last order, we're gonna be submitting an option order. So first we need to build our option symbol. So I'm gonna be using SPY, the 520 expiration, the type will be C for call and the strike will be 537. And we're gonna pass in that option symbol for our ticker. The side will be buy to open, our session will be normal, the duration will be day, the order type will be limit. I just wanna buy one contract and the limit price will be 10 cents. And finally, for the asset type, we're gonna set that to option. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this block and we'll take a look at thinkorswim. We can see all of our orders, which have working status. We see our first order of buying one share of AMC at the market price. We see our Palantir order of buying one share at $5. 
the time in force is good till cancelled and extended. And finally, we see our option order to buy one contract of SPY using the 520 expiry at the 537 strike. We wanted to buy a call option at 10 cents. So now we're going to try and replace this option order by changing the quantity and the price. So back in our script, the very next block is where we have that function. So just as the previous function, we're going to have the same fields. And the only thing that really changes here is the request we're making. So once we build our URL and our payload, instead of a post request, we're going to submit this as a put request. And again, if the order goes through, we want to extract our order number. So I'll go ahead and minimize this and run it. So again, as I mentioned, the only thing we're going to change is the quantity and the limit price. So we're going to go ahead and run this block and then we're going to check on thinkorswim. And we do see that the quantity has changed along with the price. Previously, we had one for quantity and 10 cents for the limit price. Now for the very next block, I'm going to be showing you guys how to retrieve your order history. So in order to use this function, we need to pass in our account number, which again is encrypted. The max results is optional. The default is 3000. We need to pass in the from and to dates. Just make sure that the from enter time is within 60 days from today's date. And then finally, we have status, which is optional, but we can use any any of these that are available. If you set this to null, it'll go ahead and retrieve all that's available. So if we open up this function, we're going to start off by building our URL. Don't worry about formatting the from and to dates. This function will take care of that for you since they want them in ISO 8601 format. Then we're going to check our access token and submit a get request. If the page status code is 200, we're going to extract the content and return a data frame. Otherwise, if there's nothing to return, then our output is just going to be null. So let's use this function to retrieve our order history for today. For the from and to dates, just enter them in this format or just use system date if you just want the current day, which is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to replace this for orders submitted today and I'll go ahead and run this block. And for privacy reasons, I'm going to be setting my account number to NA. So if we take a look at that data frame, we have a total of 44 columns. I did submit a couple of orders prior to recording this video, which is why we have seven entries instead of the three, but I'm assuming the top three are the most recent. So if we scroll to the right, we get plenty of information for our orders. Since we were able to extract the order IDs, we can go ahead and cancel these orders. So in the next function called cancel order, all we really need is the account number and the order ID. So we're going to start off by building our URL with our encrypted account number and pass in the order ID. We need to check our access token and we're going to submit a delete request. So we're going to go ahead and cancel all of our orders. Order number three was the one we replaced. So that order is no longer available. But if we run this block, and we check on thinkorswim. We see that our orders have disappeared and you're also gonna get a printout out in the console stating that the order was successfully canceled for each one. And with that guys, this concludes the video. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna be going over complex orders. So stay tuned for that. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.